Good morning, everyone. Leah Dixon here from Port Coquitlam, British Columbia. And I am going to um, be showing you guys the New Horizons Designer Series paper today. Um, so there's actually not going to be a ton of stamping because this designer paper just really speaks for itself. I'm going to switch over to my desktop so you guys can see what I'm talking about. And here we go. There we go. So I'm actually going to be pairing up our designer series paper with um, the special moments stamp set. It's the only stamping we're going to do today is our sentiment. Um, and this is actually a celebration reward. This is something that you can earn with a $120 purchase. Um, and then you get it for free as part of our celebration. So really, really exciting. Love that set. So many great things. But let's take a look at our designer series papers. I think I have all of the patterns here, but there's 48 sheets in this pack of New Horizons designer series paper. They're all these gorgeous watercolors that have been photographed. And so one side tends to be kind of like a, a large, um, like, singular two color kind of thing and then the other sides are like truly like horizons so we've got the mountains and the water and the sky and everything um and they've just done such a beautiful job with these getting different colored skies and um and different scenery in the background trees and mountains and all sorts of stuff and then you know are just a beautiful watercolor on the other side um, i think i'm going to show you guys that one um, so I'm not sure if I have them all here. I might have to dig into the box that I have beside me and um, pull out some other designs. And some great ones just for creating, like um, cutting out leaves with this or cutting out trees and just really, really beautiful patterns on here. All right. I love this one with the gorgeous sunset. And then the other side of that is just this really nice, bright, polished pink. And then we've got like some foggier days and some more muted tones and some darker colors. And that's definitely not all of the patterns. So I'm just going to dig in here and see what else I've got. So I've also got all my scraps and stuff in here. So we've got like these pieces with the wildflower. And um, so that one is actually, this is only a portion of the page, but it's wildflowers with a mountain scene in the background. And then the other side is kind of just a sunny day on a field. Um, there's just so many different patterns in here. Oh, here's one that I haven't shown you. The beautiful, to me, this is almost like outer space or something, but this also cuts out really beautiful tulips if you've got those tulip dyes. And then the other side is more of a cold, um, snowy day. It would make a great background on the polar bears or, um, you know, just a really beautiful blue background. So we've got all of that. We've got some pink tones and so our evening sunsets and then some darker, um, just solid colored backgrounds, all in the watercolor though. So it's just, it's a really, really beautiful pack of designer series paper. And the paper does the work for you when you're creating, you guys. Um, you're gonna see today, our card today is so super duper fast. Um, and it's all like the paper does all the work. So just a reminder, again, the stamp set I'm using is from Celebration. Um, so you can earn this one with a $120 purchase and you get a ton. It's actually two full sides of um, sentiments for all kinds of occasions. Um, so that one is what we're using, but you can grab any sentiment and turn this card into any kind of card you want. Um, which I think is just the best thing about this paper is it's just so easy to use. So the piece I have grabbed to work with today. Oh, hi, Linda. The piece I have grabbed today to work with is this beautiful um, purple pink sky with the cool mountain range. And then I don't know, you decide if that's snow or water. And then the back side of that one was a really nice blue and green, like just a field with a blue sky. Um, but we're going to use this gorgeous mountain. It just feels very, um, very peaceful to me, which is exactly what I'm looking for, because today I'm actually going to be creating a sympathy card. So to get started, I'm going to take this piece. And so this was actually a scrap that I had. I had created another card um, using the other piece of this. So I'd cut my designer's paper into a three inch chunk. 
um, and then trimmed it down to five and a half. Um, and so I actually had two of these. So I used the other one on a different project. And then I'm just gonna take this five and a half by three inch piece and I'm going to glue it down onto a three and a quarter by five and a half inch piece of Misty Moonlight, which is one of the colors in here. Hi, Lila. Aren't those papers amazing? Um, what I just, I love that you really need to do nothing. Like you can stamp on them if you want, but you really need to do nothing to these to make the most beautiful cards. All right, so we're just gonna glue that straight down onto our Misty Moonlight. There we go. <laughs> oh, come on. And this is why I use liquid glue so that I can straighten it out when I don't glue it down nice and straight. <laughs> All right, so that is glued down. Now, the next thing that we have here is I've got a um, Knight of Navy card base. Now, to me, this card base, when I pop this on here, it just looks a little bit plain. So I was thinking about embossing it, but I don't really like embossing my card bases because I feel like they lose some of their strength and some of their, their structure. So what I thought instead is that we could do a little bit of masking and put um, put a pattern on here in the background. And so I'm going to go in and grab, um, I should actually double check that these are still current actually. I can't remember which masks are in our catalog still. Um, so, oh, and those aren't the ones I want anyways. Oh, actually that one is. All right, so I'm pretty sure that these are still um, current. I will just double check that the basic pattern decorative masks are still in our catalog because I'd like to use a mask that you guys could actually grab and use for yourselves. So just give me a second. So in our catalog, the masks are actually kind of funny. They get a little bit hidden. So I always use, I don't know if you guys knew this, but we actually have an index at the back. Um, and so these are called decorative masks on page 128. And when I pop in here, I can see, yeah. So the one with the polka dots, oh, that pattern. Oh, I really like that pattern. All right, so we actually currently have three sets of masks then because we have the two in our main catalog plus one in our mini. So that gives us so many options for something to create with. Perfect. So I think that these trees though are going to be um, let's see how much of them will show. I think they're going to be the best. Oh, well, maybe not. Not enough of them is going to show. Let's go with a smaller pattern. So we're going to use my favorite pattern. Oh, where did you go? Where did you go? We have so many masks right now. It's awesome. All right, so here's my favorite pattern. Uh, I have used this one on so many cards. I just can't get enough of it. All right, I've got mess of masks to deal with later. So when I'm doing my masking, I do like to have um, just a scrap piece of paper here. And I like to kind of consider exactly where this is going to show up on my card. Now, some people I know will actually um, tape these down. Sometimes I do, but today I'm just going to do this the quick and easy way which is just to hold it in place. So I'm gonna grab my blending brush. I am going to blend Night of Navy onto Night of Navy. Um, so I've got my blending brush here, my ink pad, and we're gonna hold that in place. And I don't need to do a ton of this because we've got um, our beautiful paper going over top of most of this. And I'm not going to do the left hand side. So here we go. And then hold it in place. I'm just going to peek, and that looks awesome. So there we have it. We have got our pattern blended onto there just to add a little bit of interest without kind of losing the strength of our card. All right, I'm, I'm going to keep this out because I think I'm going to blend some on our insert as well once we're once we're finished designing that card. 
So I've got that. Now I'm going to take this piece and add it right onto our card front. So you can see now we just have a little bit of interest there, but it doesn't take away from this gorgeous paper. Um, hi, Maria. Oh, thank you, Lila. Yeah, it just adds a little, a little pop to it. So this piece now we are going to glue straight down. So I'm going to grab my liquid glue. And put that right down onto my card front. There we go. That's done. And now I am going to stamp my sentiment. So I am actually going to do my sentiment on Knight of Navy as well. So there's a lot of Knight of Navy going on on this card. Um, and I'm going to emboss it. Now the sentiment I chose, and I mean, you could go any way you wanted with this card. It's really generic enough. Um, so like you could go with a happy birthday or thanks for brightening up my day or whatever. But um, unfortunately right now I have a lot of people who need sympathy cards. So I'm kind of trying to stock up on those for them. So we're going to use with sympathy. And now I thought I had it on. A, oh, there we go. I do have it on a block. So I am going to stamp that with my Versamark. Now before I do that, I am going to give this just a quick little rub with my embossing buddy and um if you don't have one of these um i've heard people say you can just sew up a little bag with like some cornstarch in it and um it works just fine the idea is we're just trying to remove any oils that may be on there from our fingers so that we don't get embossing powder sticking where we don't want it uh, now let's see is this paper wide enough oh it is wide enough all right so i'm just going to ink that up with my versamark and stamp that. Now I am stamping first and then I will cut it out afterwards. Um, that's just going to allow me to kind of make sure I don't mess this up. I don't have to line it up. And so then I just dip this into my white embossing powder, tap it off. Hi Shirley. Hi Louise. Um, yeah, that paper is absolutely incredible. And I'll give you guys a little secret about this paper. You're going to want to stock up on it now because the March Paper Pumpkin is designed in the same style. They had an artist watercolor backgrounds to create um, the March Paper Pumpkin. And so all the stamps and everything in that March Paper Pumpkin coordinate beautifully with this new Horizons Designer Series paper. Um, so once people see that Paper Pumpkin, this paper is going to fly off the shelves. All right, so now I'm just gonna use my heat tool to heat this up. Hopefully it's not too noisy for you guys. embossing I've ever done. I should have probably taken some of those flex off before I started, but that's okay. Um, so we've got that done. Now we're going to create our label that we're going to put on here. Um, but I actually want to bring in a special label to use with you guys. It's one that um, is actually not available to customers yet. It will be available on March 1st. And it is from the brand new Waves die set. And so this actually goes with the Waves of the Ocean collection that's available to demonstrators now and to customers on March 2nd. And um, I wanted to share it with you because it's one of my favorite label dies right now. And it's also part of um, a stamp camp that I'm going to be offering. Um, and so you can actually already register. The link is on my link tree. 
And it's something that I'm doing with my friend Ange McKay and uh, Lori Wilcox. And so the three of us are putting on this stamp camp. So this fits beautifully on this label. So we're just going to take our baby boss here. And we're going to run this through. So now if you do not own a baby boss, um, it's a great little thing to have. It's only $82, I believe, and gets you a long ways towards the 120 to earning this stamp set for free. Um, so it's kind of a nice little addition to your craft room. So I'm just layering these up and we're gonna run that through. Oh, no, I didn't have my own normal advice to not lay it straight, so I had a big speed bump to go over. If you just put that on slightly at an angle, it runs a lot more smoothly. All right, perfect. So we're going to pop that out. And so I'm going to show you what I love so much about this particular label is that it has the two little handles on the end move this stuff out of the way here we go so it has these two little spots here on the end and so when I put this down I'm actually going to grab some more ribbon and I think I'm going to use this what is this called metallic mesh ribbon and what we're going to do with it is we're going to loop it around this little handle basically and then out the other side there we go and so then this is going to be able to loop around and let's just cut off the piece that we need. But cut that off like that and move that metallic mesh out of the way. So now I've looped it around one end. I'm going to loop it back through this handle on the other end. There we go. So now both of my pieces have just come out that one end and now I'm going to be able to tie them together. Actually, maybe I won't loop it through. Maybe I'll just tie it. I'll put one through and the other one not. So I love this one because you can kind of like attach ribbons that don't have to go around your whole card and um, you can do fun things with them here. You can also just slip a piece of paper through there to add some interest. Just so many options. All right, so now I'm going to hold that one end down while I tie this knot. And I'm going to try and tie it kind of on top. And I'm simply tying a knot, like no bows, no nothing fancy, just tie a knot. And before I really secure that, I want to make sure that I'm not bending my paper. There we go. All right. So just like that. Hmm. You know what? I actually don't know if I want to tie it. I think I might untie it and just let it go straight through. I liked that look a little bit better. So it's not the easiest stuff to untie, but we'll manage here. So I think what we're going to do is I am going to put both ends through this hole. You guys are getting me while well, I'm designing a card on the fly again because it was so cold today. I took sympathy on the little one and drove him to school. Okay, so we're going to do that and we're going to use my other little trick where I'm going to use some um, twine to tie up that end. So I think for this one, I'm actually going to keep with the blue. So I'm going to pop in here to um, my Fan Baker's Twine. So this is a, a special set that we have that has the blue, the green, and the red and white. And then let's see, I've got this piece here. Can I untie that? Oh, there we go. Perfect. I had a cut piece cut for another project and I ended up not using it. So we'll use it on this one. So I'm going to take this twine and I am going to tie it around these ends. Before I pull it too tight, I'm going to wiggle it into where I want it. There we go. Pull that tight and now I can tie my bow here. Hopefully I've left myself enough to tie a bow. There we go. And we'll let that kind of twist around. So when you're tying bows with the twine, I just kind of let them decide which way they want to fall. And then trim them up. All right. So there. 
Oh, come on. I want that bow to be open now. Right, some days to tying bows is really easy, and other days like today, not so easy. All right, and then I'm going to trim up those ends, and I'm going to trim up these ends. And actually, these ones, I'm going to try and find them to separate them. There we go. Trim that. Trim that. All right. So with that all trimmed, oh, maybe not enough. It's going to go off my card still. So I'm going to have to trim those ends just a tiny bit more. You can leave them so they go off your card end, but I don't, I don't like doing that. All right. There we go. So just a little bit of silver added onto there, just a little bit of interest. And now we're going to grab our dimensionals and pop that down onto our card. So I had my dimensionals right beside me. There we go. Oh yeah, Val, some days they're, they're awesome. Today, not so much. All right, so now this does get a little bit like fluffy on the back. So you've got a few choices. You can like try and tape it down or for me, I'm just gonna use the dimensionals. They're gonna go right through that meshing and kind of hold them down anyways. But I am going to make sure to use quite a few, um, more than I would normally for a little label. And there we go. So just to really make sure that that's secured and that label's not going anywhere. There. And now we're gonna take this and kind of decide based on our horizon where we would like it. I want it up there. We're gonna pop that down, fluff out the little ends there and move our bows so that they sit the way we want them to. And if this guy's not sitting exactly how you'd like him to, you can always use a mini glue dot to secure him as well. All right, now I am gonna grab one more. I'm gonna grab a mini dimensional. I'm gonna use my take your pick tool to sneak it in there to kind of help hold that down. All right, so I'm gonna take both sides off before I do this. So I've got a mini dimensional that has no backings on either side. There we go. And then I'm gonna sneak him under. Oh, oh go on. This is why I'm using my take your pick tool so that I can really get in there. All right, so now that's sitting more evenly. I don't like it when labels sit all crooked. All right, so that is basically our card. We can leave it exactly like this, or we can add in some embellishments and just kind of put a few little dots in there. And so I think if I was going to do that, I am going to pop in and grab my polished dots because I don't want anything on here that's really going to stand out. Um, I want to keep the card very muted and um, very subtle looking. So I'm just going to grab a few polished dots here. There we go. Pop them on. And it's one of those things that like you don't really notice them there, but we do notice that they've made a difference. Keep that one down there. No, we'll put it on top. All right. So just a few little polished dots on there to finish off the card. Um, and there you go. We literally stamped a sentiment. That was it. And we have this gorgeous card created just with that designer series paper as um, as a huge focal point. And you can use this exact layout with the other papers in the kit to create such completely different looks. Um, so we could come in here, here, let me just grab a few of the papers and show you. Um, you know, if we had used, um, let's see, this one's a beautiful one. If we had used this designer series paper with a green background, we could put like that, thanks for brightening up my day and it's a sunny background card. We can pop in here and which other ones? Oh, throw in that gorgeous sunset and a sentiment. And now, you know, you've got a beautiful congratulations retirement type card. So, so many options with this paper. 
Um, if I had had a bit more time, I could have actually created those before going live, but maybe I'll have some time this afternoon. And when I blog post about this, I'll show you my two other alternatives using the same layout, just a three inch piece of designer series paper um, to create just a wide variety of cards and just changing up our sentiments. So that's about it. Thank you so much for joining me today. And um, let's see, I'll just switch over. There we go. Hi. So thanks so much. And don't forget that our new March Paper Pumpkin is featuring paper just like this New Horizons. So if you don't register for Paper Pumpkin, this is definitely the month to give it a shot because March is... Um, like an anniversary month for Paper Pumpkin. And so you actually get an extra stamp set as well in your kit, the gorgeous papers, and um, just a really wonderful time to try it. If you already do know what Paper Pumpkin's about, have tried it and love it, it's also now the best time to grab yourself a prepaid subscription because prices are going up a little bit as of March 1st. So if you grab a prepaid subscription, you can earn some celebration rewards as well as avoid that um, price increase for a little while because they won't go back and like add on charges and what you pay is what you pay. So if you order it now, then you get it at a little bit less of a price and get some celebration items. Uh, so thanks so much everyone for joining me. Have a wonderful day and we'll see you this Sunday. I have uh, my last celebration Sunday happening um, and I'm going to be featuring, oh, I can't remember which one. Um, oh, I know, um, the friendly hello with the beautiful designer series paper that coordinates with this one. Um, so that'll be this Sunday. And then um, I'll go back to just doing my regular Wednesday morning lives. Bye, everyone.